welcome back, everybody. It's Gerard and Gabby, and we are here for the Kicks and Shit Show, episode three. Gabby, I think we found a bit of a momentum with the naming and the and how we're going to do this. Absolutely. I mean, I love a good dad joke, as I've already mentioned, but a play on words like makes me feel things in areas that I can't really talk about on the show. So <laughs> I geek out over this stuff. So I'm like super jazzed. I hope you guys are too. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to move on to some quick topics. There's something I want to talk about, and I'm going to go with 90 seconds on this starting now. So sadly, of course, um, the world has lost many music legends over the past uh, couple days, uh, Little Richard, Betty Wright, and Andre Harrell. I want to speak to Little Richard in particular because, of course, he in many ways is the father, the originator, often imitated, never duplicated, right? Like, who started rock and roll. He was in a 1991 Air Jordan commercial, um, which was phenomenal. Those were the Jordan 6s. And we're going to take a look at that commercial right now. Yo, Moss Blackman, here with the Ladders Lamp. I am the genie of the lamp. I'm granting you just one wish. What should I wish for? Do you know, do you know, do you know? A million dollars? Nah, tax problem. A new car? Can't drive. I got it. A wild bottle of my flop, man. Boom! Look, Mom, I can fly. I like that, Genie. I am the greatest! And, Gabby, that commercial just says everything that, like, you need to know. I mean, the convergence of sport, popular culture, and I mean, it's always been connected. This was 1991. Spike Lee directed this. You know, Michael Jordan, of course, the biggest star in the world at that time. Little Richard, an icon in music and rock and roll. To me, one of the great things about sport and about sneaker culture and fashion is the convergence, right? You could be a music person and you're going to rock some cool kicks because maybe you like J. Cole, maybe you like Travis Scott, maybe you like Jay-Z, whoever, because they got some cool kicks, right? Maybe you're into this particular movie and this director and he, he or she emphasizes sneakers and kicks. I think it's wonderful, and I'm so glad that we're able to just talk about this convergence on our lovely podcast, and that is what I have to say about sports, fashion, and culture. I agree. I mean, I, he's an icon, honestly. No matter what kind of genre you listen to, oh, there we go. You grew up with him, so I, I respect that, and I, we can definitely talk about that a little bit more at the end of the segment. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to talk about sneakers in quarantine. I'm starting my clock right now for 90 seconds. Um, I call this bit felt royal, might delete later. And I just, I don't know if everyone else is struggling with this, but I keep going back and forth about buying sneakers in quarantine, right? It's not fiscally responsible, but, you know, I'm weak and I love a good pair of ones. I love my royals. I mean, they're one of my favorite pairs of ones. I wear them to every Nick's event, everything that I go to, that I try out for, all that good stuff. So I love that silhouette. I love that it's my favorite color. But let me tell you, I felt really played on Saturday. I, I tried on my sneakers app. I did a couple online raffles. And I just took an L everywhere. And I think some of it is because everybody is home. So normally I can enter a raffle, go hopefully win it in a store, or I can go buy it day of in a store. But taking that away, knowing how tough it already is to get coveted sneakers in those launch periods, let me tell you, I was 9.59 in my sneakers app, had Foot Locker on my computer, I had Champs on my iPad. Yeah, I'm that girl, like judge me all you want. But I was like ready to rock. I had like the Hibbit app, like the Hibbit, the Hibbit, the Hip Hip Hop, like things that I've never even heard of to buy sneakers. And I'm like, got my list. And at 9.59, I was like ready to hit play, logged into the app already, like sneakers has my info. Could not be any easier, right? Wrong. Very, very wrong. So I go to press it, and I've never been shut down faster on the sneakers app in my life. That's 90 seconds, but I, I just felt real rejected, and it, part of me wants them even more because of that, and part of me is like, F you, sneaker world. Um, so, struggle. let me ask you this question. A lot of people have said this, and I don't know it to be true because I have yet to purchase anything through the sneakers app. I have it, but I've never, you know... I just haven't, I haven't used it yet. Okay. People say, and again, I'm not, I'm just saying what I hear people say online. They think the sneakers app is BS. They think that there aren't enough stock available and there's all these bots that buy it up first. Cause like, they're like, like you said, 
They'll get into a 10 a.m. drop is when the drops happen. They'll be in at 959 and they're like, well, I'm here on time. And you're, as you're, to your point, my size, my credit card shipping, I don't have to enter anything. I just click buy, done. How is it that I cannot get these shoes when I'm literally in the app? And I, I'm sure some of it is like people who use algorithms and bots to like buy up a bunch of pairs and do different things. But I, I do wonder, like people love, like, I see pictures on social all the time about taking L's and I'm like, yo, like, I, I don't know. How does that happen? Yeah. I mean, I took an L and I honestly have not bounced back yet. So if we're just being completely, completely real. And I, I think Nike is really trying to get rid of the bot problem. So I know that's something that's on their list. I think they're doing a good job of limiting that. I do think though, with inventory, that's the tough part, right? Is having enough inventory and even just digital capacity. I mean, I'm no tech person by any means, but I usually do the Foot Locker website over the app because the app freezes and it's, I don't think it's any brand's problem. I, I don't blame Foot Locker at all. I think it's the bandwidth we have with technology. And now that everyone's home, it's nobody's fault. It's like kind of the luck of the draw, whoever gets through. I know some of the different apps and whatnot have like a priority for buyers who buy and spend more money, which makes sense. It's like a VIP type program. So on some of the more coveted limited releases, they tend to get easier access. I'll put it that way. That's just what I've heard. I don't know if that's true. I know I took an L and I am very used to that feeling, but you know, if it's meant to be, it'll be. You know, it's interesting and we'll wrap here. I think that, you know, the part of it is exclusivity, right? Like how much of it is Nike or whomever wanting, you know, sneakers to be a certain model to be exclusive. So they're only, you know, 500,000 pairs made, right? So that way, hey, this is it. So only so like if you don't get it, you don't get it. And then there is that secondary market that we talk about, which I'm sure we'll get into on another segment of the Kicks and Shit Show. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah. Peace.